Parents often ask me, what's the perfect age to tell my kid about sex? I'm Kathleen and I make videos for parents on how to have the modern day sex talks. Of course, I can generally answer that question with research, recommendations, and guidance, but I can't tell you the perfect age for your child because all children are different. You'll have to take the education and information that I provide here and then decide when it's the right time for your child. So when parents reach out to me about having the sex talks with their kid on the autism spectrum, first, I'm thrilled that they're thinking about this and recognize that all kids need to receive sex education because everybody is a sexual being. Second, autistic traits and behaviors range widely. And just like having the sex talks with kids that are not diagnosed as being on the spectrum, you know your kid best. You can take the generic advice that I provide here and adapt it to suit the needs of your child. But if you do want more personalized advice and guidance on a specific topic, situation, or behavior, you can always book a 30 minute one-on-one -on -one call with me on my website where I can then focus on you and your needs specifically. When it comes to the sex talks, there's a lot of information to cover. It can feel overwhelming, especially with the nuance and intricacies associated with sexuality, relationships, and behaviors. Starting early, as in the primary and intermediate age, around boundary setting, consent language, using medically accurate terms for the body parts, as well as kissing, can all lay a good foundation to the talks as your child gets closer to puberty. I ask this question to all the parents who reach out to me. What's your main goal for having the sex talks? Because figuring out why you want to approach the sex talks will actually help you in having the sex talks. For example, is your main goal bodily autonomy? Developing the skills to take care of their own body? Preventing potential abuse? Ensuring that they have a healthy sexual relationship or experience in the future? Or is it all of the above? Once you know your main goal and even sub goals, then you can approach each talk with that in mind. Keeping the information that you provide to your child in simple terms so that you can say it in the exact same way repetitively is very important when it comes to having the talks with your child living with autism. For example, starting in the primary age, you may say simple statements like, may I give you a kiss? May I give you a cuddle? May I wipe your vulva or anus? It's simple, it's repetitive, and then can be built upon to include verbiage for preventing potential abuse. No one, adults and children, can kiss you without asking you, may I give you a kiss? And you cannot kiss adults and children without asking them, may I give you a kiss? Keep it simple and keep saying it. In the intermediate age, privacy becomes more wanted for many kids. But to a child living with autism, it may not come naturally to them to want privacy right now. You will need to identify for them times and spaces for privacy as well as respecting others' privacy. Offering space for privacy to your child more often during this age can help in laying a foundation for talks on masturbation, puberty changes, and sex. And this can be achieved through simple explanations around boundary setting. What parts of the home are you comfortable with your child being naked in or later on masturbating in? Once you know your boundary, then share it with your child. Be simple and clear. For example, you can say, you can be naked in the bedroom and the bathroom because those areas are considered private. Be clear on where changing one's clothes is allowed outside of the home. Think about public bathrooms that have private areas and help them to distinguish the difference. As they get to the point where they are going to masturbate, it's going to be helpful to have had these more detailed conversations on private spaces. A child living with autism is going to develop their sexuality just like any other kid. They will have a sexual orientation, express their gender, and experience feelings of sensuality and intimacy. You can help them to normalize all of these feelings by giving them the words to express themselves. Because they're aware and know to ask somebody to give them a hug or a kiss, you can use social storytelling to help them think about the potential outcomes and feelings they may have depending on whether that person says yes or no. Normalize the urge or feeling to want to masturbate. You can say something to the effect of. It's normal to think about wanting to touch your own genitals and masturbate, and you can do so in a private space like your bedroom when you are alone. Normalize them wanting to express themselves, and it's common that they're gonna want to dress in a certain way or wear makeup, and talk about how it is normal to want to feel attractive and present yourself in a certain way. This is a part of their sensuality as well as gender expression. 
Make sure your child knows that you are there for them and willing to talk to them. Let them know that it's okay to feel confused about privacy and touching one's own genitals and consent language and asking somebody for a hug or kiss. And that if they have questions, you want them to come to you. And if you can, try and establish another trusted adult that they can also go to. Parents, you may need to bring up these topics and conversations more often with your child because your child may not come to you with sex questions as often when compared to children who are not on the spectrum. So keep it simple. Start with consent language, boundary setting, and using medically accurate terms. In the description, I've linked some books to help you facilitate these conversations with your child. They are affiliate links. There is no obligation to use my link, but if you do use it to purchase the book, I get a small commission. And also, if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one consult with me, my website is there. I'm Kathleen, and I'll be back next week with another video.